Firstly, I'd like to admit that I've been a little sidetracked recently. I wish I could say that in September 2009, I was busy making videos discussing the then news that had surfaced. The LRO photos, the Dutch moon rock that turned out to be petrified wood, the astonishing fact that the missing Apollo moonwalk videos had turned out to be accidentally taped over by NASA. These and other stories were heralded in the news and I had every intention of addressing these in great detail. I had several projects planned and ready to go, but they all needed to be put on hold. Naturally, Ralph Renee's funeral was understandingly a more pressing matter that required my attention. However, during such absence, YouTube quickly turned into Attack of the Trolls. This left me with more rubbish to clean up after, and hence my coverage of the current affairs and other projects got pushed even further back. Certain viewers have even complained that I have spent way too much time on these trolls and should focus on new material. I had every intention of exposing new material, but ignoring the propaganda won't make it go away. Furthermore, ignoring it runs you the risk of being accused of running from their version of the truth. Then again, addressing their videos and responses gives them undeserved attention. And there will always be their fellow trolls and adoring fans to pat them on the back and give undeserved praise, even after they have been debunked six ways to Sunday. But it is nice to know that in the midst of the chaos and pointless arguments, there is still harmony within the moon hoax debate. There is an individual on YouTube called Saint Bays. His real name, which he doesn't mind my using, is Joseph Grutt. It is clear that he believes the moon landings were real, and he is friends with many of my opponents. But he has also invited me to his friends list. There are many films of mine completely unrelated to Apollo that he enjoys. He has never attacked me or lied about me because my beliefs that Apollo was faked. And ultimately, the two of us peacefully agree to disagree along these lines. In January 2010, he uploaded a video called A Request for Jarrah White and Other Moon Hoaxes. Hey everyone, apparently I should have tested the other video because the sound broke out shortly after I started. I'm hoping this time it will work, otherwise I'll just uh, break out the old camera and uh, do it the old fashioned way. Alright, the gist of what I want to get across to uh, Jarrah White and any other Moon Hoax believers is in, in the upcoming year 2018 we're going to be going back to the Moon. Or maybe you want to say to the first time, I don't know. So my, uh, my thought for all of you, instead of continuing to make videos saying that it was fake, which I'm not going to try to convince you at this moment that it was real, but let's say you start making videos about what you'd like to see NASA do to prove that it's really there in 2018. What kind of test would you like to see them perform? What sort of third parties you want involved? What can they do to convince you? You can leave your comment below or if you're feeling like you got some extra time make a video response i'd love to hear each and every one of you say in your own voices what you want to have happen in 2018 to convince you i think it's reasonable that you know in this practically a whole eight plus years that we're going to have between now and 2018 to uh, get NASA to throw in a few extra things for uh, just for you guys, just to convince you things are really what they seem. So hopefully this message will get through clear, and I await your responses. Have a wonderful day. This is a very good question. I have addressed the Constellation program in an earlier video, but a lot has happened since then. With the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter being the first albeit delayed unmanned lunar mission that Bush promised, and the more recent test launch of the Ares-1, 
I feel it is time to readdress this subject. The first thing I really should say is that the so-called return to the moon is not set in stone. In fact, looking at the current affairs, it seems its 50-50 chances of getting off the drawing board have been dashed. Long story short, the new Constellation program was planned to use two rockets to get to the moon the Saturn-sized Ares-5 to launch Lunar Module Altar and the Earth Departure Stage for Translunar Injection Burn. And the smaller Ares-1 to launch the crewed Orion capsule. Basically the plan was the two crafts would be launched separately, rendezvous and dock in Earth orbit and then go for TLI. The Ares-5 was still under development. The Ares-1 was built and has been successfully test flown once. A second test launch was not scheduled until 2013, but it seemed very likely that such a test launch would not happen. President Obama's administration had stated that the Ares project was way too expensive and his administration would likely cut the budget and cancel the program. It's meant to be the spacecraft that will replace the ageing space shuttle, which is due to be uh, retired next year. The plan would be that the Ares rocket would carry man back to the moon by 2020 and then on to Mars. But a presidential panel says it's the wrong rocket, it's too expensive, and they want the program scrapped. The uh, human spaceflight program that the United States is currently pursuing is one that uh, is on an unsustainable trajectory. Now, Ares is the god of war, I'm told, and it might have a real battle on its hands to survive. <laughs> a lot of people think that this may be its first and last flight. In March 2010, the gloves were taken off. President Barack Obama officially cancelled the Constellation program, much to the disappointment of Apollo astronauts such as Neil Armstrong, Jim Lovell and Gene Cernan. Armstrong endorsed a letter to the president by former Apollo commander Eugene Cernan saying limiting spacecraft operation would lead the country on a long downhill slide to mediocrity. Obviously, uh, the president said, you know, these are lean times in this country. We've, we've kind of already been there and done that. What do you think about the idea to cancel this moon program, the Orion program? Well, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm extremely disappointed, angry at, uh, at, at a time or two. Uh, we talk about an investment in the future. He's taking that investment and put it on a shelf as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, I don't care how people want to sugarcoat it. We are no longer a space exploration, a space-faring nation. We are now put in a position of, uh, of second place. And what we don't do today, someone I can promise you, someone else is going to do tomorrow. And I don't think the American people are going to like that. This is not to say that the response to Constellation's cancellation has been mutual. Buzz Aldrin, who has constantly been against returning to the moon, was delighted with the news. One member of the first mission to the moon believes America's new project is a waste of time and money. I fail to see the point why we would want, we, the United States, would want to go back and explore where we've been before. Who's going to get to Mars first? While, while we're doing something at the moon? I, I fail to see the, the, the logic of why we would want to do that. We develop places we've explored. We explore places we haven't been to. Mars we have not been to yet. This hardly makes sense. Aldrin is the only one who continues to speak publicly and at great lengths about his moon exploits. The others, especially Armstrong, rarely do. The first man on the moon who has largely shunned the public spotlight only spoke about Apollo 11 for about 11 seconds. So why would he be against another mission within his lifetime? By all accounts, he should be excited that some young astronaut would soon be walking in his footsteps, quite literally.